In this presentation, we will take a look at the sales price and volume variance. We're going to go through the same process with some of the costs. It might be easiest to take a look at first the sales price and volume variance and break those items out and then we'll apply this same concept to some of the costs. First, we want to consider what the budgeted sales would be in comparison to the actual sales. In other words, we're imagining that we have the budgeted sales, in this case, the 540000 And then we had the actual sales after we ran the process, and it was 560. The difference between the two is the variance, is the change. We can consider this if we just had a normal type of budget. We're going to say, hey, here's our sales line. Here's what the sales actually were. Here's what we budgeted them to be. We have a difference of the 20500 That's great. Let's make decisions based on that. Let's consider that as part of our decision-making process for the next time period to see what we should do next. However, there's a couple different things we need to break out in order to make the best decision because this 20000 is a difference in total, but it could be due to two different things. And those two different things could be, did we sell a different number of units in terms of how many units we were budgeting to sell as compared to what we actually sold? And the other item would be, did we have a change in the price did we budget at one price and sell it for another price? So this is one way we could break out this 20500 into those two factors. It's going to be our information up top and we'll populate it into this format down below. And as we do so, we'll have kind of a pictorial type method to break out our two variances. So our information up top, the AQ is going to be the actual quantity. SQ is going to stand for standard quantity. The AP, the actual price. And the SP, the standard price. So you can see here and you can consider and remember that as we look at the standard price, we're kind of thinking about the budgeted price, what we think the price should be given all things going at the constant rate or all else equal or under normal conditions, I should say. And then the actual quantity and actual price are going to be what actually happens. So you're imagining those happening after we have run through the process, after we ran through the month, we already we know those numbers at those point in time because that's what actually happened. And then we're going to have our information over here. The sales is going to be 59 units. The average price is going to be the 9,500. These being the actual numbers. So actual sales and the actual price. Then the budgeted price is going to be 54 units. So this is what we thought should happen. The budgeted average price. So this is going to be the budgeted price is going to be 10,000. Okay, so we're going to take this information. We're going to compare as we did before the actual sales and the budgeted sales, and then we'll use this middle kind of variant to break them out into their components. So let's see how this will work. We're gonna say the actual sales is gonna be the AQ, which is the actual quantity, 59 from our information, and then the actual, and then the AP times the AP, which is the actual price, that's gonna be the 9,500, the average price in our data up top. The 59 quantity times the actual price, 9,500, is 560,500, and that's going to be the actual sales. Let's jump over here to the budgeted sales then. That's going to be the standard quantity, kind of our, our budgeted type quantity. That is going to be the 54 units budgeted. And then we have the standard price. And that's going to be the 10,000. If we multiply them out, the 54 times the 10,000, we get the 540,000. Now we're going to compare that to this middle item here. And we're going to say the middle item is going to be the actual quantity. And that's going to be the 59 units, same as over here. But then we're going to multiply it times the standard price. And that's going to be the 10,000 as it is over there. The 59 actual quantity times the 10,000 standard price gives us the 590,000. So now we're going to do a comparison. We see this minus this, that's going to be our total difference, that normal kind of budget total difference. That's going to be the 560,500 minus the 540,000. There's the 20,500 we have seen before. Now we're going to take this difference, the uh, 590 minus the 560,500, that being 29,500. Now, when we concentrate on that item, note what we're comparing here. We're comparing this calculation and this calculation. What's going to be the same in those two? The AQ quantity is held constant. The thing that changes is what we're concentrating on, 
which is the AP actual price and the SP standard price. So the budgeted kind of price and the actual price are the different items. And we, we could see here that the standard price, what we budgeted to happen, is higher than the actual price. And in, in cases of sales, we, we want the price to be high because, of course, we're selling the thing and that's going to mean, mean our income is higher. So that's unfavorable. That's not good because we sold them for less than we had budgeted to sell them for. Now we'll take a look at this comparison, which is going to be the 590 minus the 540, that being the 50,000. And is it favorable or unfavorable to do that? We're going to compare the SP, standard price, standard price. It's the same. The thing that changes, the actual quantity, standard quantity. The actual quantity is higher than the standard quantity. And therefore, we're going to have a favorable difference. In other words, we sold more, actually, in units than we had budgeted to sell. That's going to be a good thing. And if you think about this, would kind of make sense we'd say hmm well we sold them for less than we thought we were going to sell them for but we sold more of them right so that would kind of make sense so let's see if that if that works out and that's going to break out then into our sales price variance here's the 59,000 59,000 unfavorable that's the price variance because it's the difference in the price uh, budgeted and actual and then we have the sales volume variance because it's the d difference in the quantity on this side, the 50,000, it's favorable. The favorable is greater than the unfavorable by 20,500 to get back to that total difference of uh, the 20,500. So breaking this out then, if we just saw the 20,500, in other words, in our normal kind of comparison between budget and actual, that wouldn't give us the kind of information we might need to make better decisions going forward. If we say, okay, the sales price variance is unfavorable of 29,500, meaning we kind of sold them possibly for less. However, the volume variance, we sold more in the, in the factor of 20,000 or uh, 50,000 here, then the difference 20,500 is favorable. So possibly whatever decrease in price in order to increase volume, we would expect paid off in that case. And maybe that would help us out in our decision making in the future.